going to call my main man, Ricky Carruth, to the stage. This motherfucker, listen, listen, listen. I don't know how he does it. 115 units a year for the last four years, over a million dollars every single year in commission. Plus he some way finds to like become a social media influencer. Plus he finds some way to edit his videos himself sometimes. And he does it with him and like two assistants. All the way from Alabama, Mr. Zero to Diamond himself. Let's wake, welcome Ricky Carew to the stage. You go ahead and try it, yeah. You gon' need you some theme music. You hear my vibe, I drop my first album, I gave him life Motivation, then I drop inspiration, I done it twice yeah. Sold a few quarters of plastic, I gave him Let's turn some, there we go Served a few on the tape, that closed cast All right, good to be here Thanks for having me First off, if you're excited to be here, make some noise yeah. So like Colton said, I'm Ricky Carruth from Remax of Orange Beach, Alabama. Uh, it's right on the Florida-Alabama line, um, right on the beach. White sandy beaches, palm trees, million dollar condos. Uh, price range, our average price is about 450, and it's an incredible place to be. I've been amazingly blessed for the last 17 years to do what I love to do. Not what anybody else wants me to do. And the work that I do, and people think, oh, he's crazy running around, you know, doing all this stuff, why is he doing all this? It's what I want to do, and that is help people buy and sell real estate. So I want to know how many of you actually love, like, a passion, not just at your job or, you know, this is what you do to make money. How many people really love helping people buy and sell real estate? Okay. Well, I am completely and utterly addicted to the feeling that I get at the end of the deal when my client looks at me right in the eye and says, thank you. Thank you so much. They know what I went through to put the deal together, and they love me for it. And this is literally my drug of choice. I don't drink or do drugs. This is it. And really, it's the reason why, after all these years, I continue to be a single agent. People ask me all the time when I'm going to start a team, don't I think it's time to start a team? And the truth is, I did try to do a team at one point about seven years ago. And through that experience, through that process, that was the actual moment that I realized I just love sales. You know, I think, there's, I think in real estate there's salespeople and there's managers and people that want to, like Danny said, lead. And I, I want to lead in a different way. I want to lead the industry. I don't want to raise the bar of the entire industry, but when it comes to real estate, I'm just a salesperson. I just love sales. It's in my soul. So I have one assistant. I have another part-time assistant. She just writes letters. But I have one main assistant that really is the backbone of my operation. No buyer's agent, no other agents. I show all my own properties. I go to all my own listing appointments, all my closings, all the inspections, negotiate all the deals. Why? Because that's what I love to do. That's what I want to do. I choose to do that. And I feel very strongly in level of happiness. And if I can make a million dollars a year and still have time every day to answer every single one of your DMs without asking you for a dime, then I could be considered the hap one of the happiest men on the planet. And what I've been thinking a lot about lately is this balance between happiness and production. We're all going to have to come to this point at some, some time in our career about balance and production. Where do we draw the line? Because I see a lot of people that are very productive and not very happy. And a lot of people that are very happy and not very productive. Where do you balance the scales? And for me, I say to myself, well, I could probably make $2 million a year in sales. But I would be less happy because I wouldn't have any time to do the things I want to do, which is like answering your DMs. 
Or I could be at maximum happiness, make a million dollars a year, and still have time to answer all of your DMs. And I choose maximum happiness. It's what drives me. All of your DMs, comments, replies, messages, emails, that's what, that's what keeps me going. When I got to a certain point in my career, when I hit the 100 deals a year and started making the million dollars a year and stuff, which was a goal for so long, when I finally got there, it wasn't as great as I, <laughs> the feeling wasn't as amazing as I thought it was gonna be. It wasn't you know, euphoric. It, ha it was euphoric for a moment, and it's euphoric to continue to do it to a certain level, but I had to find something else. And that's when I stumbled across you guys. I, I, I found a new passion that I wanted to give back to the industry. Rather than build my real estate business to the next level, I wanted to build the industry to the next level. And so you guys motivated me to write a book. After I sold 100 properties a year for three years, not after two years in the business selling 19 properties and now I'm a guru, three years of 100 properties a year, then I decided, okay, I think I have something I want to share. And so I write the book. You guys motivate me to get up at 4.30 every morning. You guys. You motivated me to become the first completely free real estate coach with over 20,000 members. And I'm just sharing what I do in my business, which people may disagree with what I do or think it doesn't work or you may love it or you may like this part of it or that part of it. But the thing is, is it's free and I'm just sharing what I do with you. And then you can do whatever you want with it. I get messages constantly from agents. I'm getting all these listings. I have all this business going on. You've poured your heart and soul into this. You haven't asked me for a dime. What can we do for you? And my answer every single time is just take something that I'm sharing, implement it into your business, and go succeed. Literally all I want from you in return is for you to just get out there and succeed. I was going to say this to the end, but when I get through, I brought 100 books. I'm going to sign them all and just give them away. I don't know if there's more than 100 people here or less than 100 people. So when I get through, I'm going straight back there. If you want one, just come get it. I don't know if there's more than 100 people here or not. But how many people here want to be a million dollar a year real estate agent? Okay, step one is I think you need to realize that every single one of you are walking million dollar a year real estate agents right now. Every single one of you have the opportunity, the skills, you're professional, you're dependable, you're hardworking, you're honest, you're everything. You wouldn't be here right now if you weren't everything that someone would want in an agent. The people that bought tickets that didn't show up, I don't know about them, but you guys are. And what you have to ask yourself is, every day when you look in the mirror, am I gonna do what it takes? Do I have what it takes? Am I gonna put forth the effort that it takes to get there? Because it's there. The only thing in between you and there is effort and time. And you have to ask yourself, <laughs> am I gonna do it or not? I'll tell you another thing, and this is dead honest, I believe this to my core. I promise you this, if a roofer that grew up in a trailer in Alabama can do it, I promise on everything in the world that every single person in this room can do what you want to do. There's not a doubt in my mind for a second. And that's what's so great about this industry too that I love. There's so many great agents at the top for you to look at and say, if they can do it, I can do it. There's nothing special about them whatsoever. I know if I can do it, I know you can do it. I know you can do it. All you have to do is be willing to do what I did to get here. I started in real estate in 2002. I was 20 years old. There was no Zillow, Facebook, 
Red X Mojo, none of this crazy stuff. New agents completely have it made right now. You don't even know what I went through to find phone numbers and dial with my finger and you know, no social media, it was nuts. But it took me eight long months to make my first sale. How many people here took six months to a year to make their first sale? Okay. You see, the business hasn't really changed that much from 17 years ago to now. It's still a process. It still takes time to learn. And agents come to me all the time that have been in the business for two weeks, a month, crying and complaining about not having any deals, not having any listings yet, haven't closed 10 properties. And my response is, welcome to the club. <laughs> because the process is, is, is the same as when I started. For, for new agents, or if you're in that predicament, I think a few things to think about are you're put, you're, you, you overestimate what you can do short term and you underestimate what you can do long term. You're overestimating what you think you can do right now. You think you can you know, do 100 deals your second year. I'll do 50 this year and 100 next year. I'll be right there where Ricky is. It doesn't work like that. So you're overestimating what you can do. Slow down and realize this is a process. Also, I think that we're, the way that we're judging our businesses is backwards. We're judging our businesses based on things that I don't think are as important, such as listings, appointments. If someone comes to me and says, Ricky, this is what I'm doing in my business. What can I do to improve? Where am I, where am I falling short? Where are the holes in my business? They say, here's how many closings, listings, and appointments I'm setting. I'm like, okay, cool. That tells me about 40% of the picture for me. What I want to know when I'm evaluating your business is how many people are you contacting daily? And out of those people, how many are you connecting with? I want to know that ratio. How many are you attempting, not attempting, how many are you talking to? And out of that number, how many you're connecting with? Because those two things tell me how many people you're talking to tell me how hard you're working and how many you're connecting with tells me where your communication skill level is right this second. And so based on all that, closings, listings, appointments, uh, number of contacts, number of connections, now, now I can see where your business really is based on the effort and the results. Talking, if you're talking to you know, thousands of people but you're not getting much results, okay, we need to work on your communication skill level. Where's your intent? What are you saying to these people? How are these conversations going? We want to go deeper there. So, and to me, let's talk about market share for a second because this is something that I feel I need to say. People, agents are looking at the market in terms of, okay, this agent has this many listings and does this many sales. So they own this much market share. Okay, well, we trade stocks on future earnings of companies. I trade market share of an agent on the future earnings of an agent. And to me, the future earnings of an agent is dependent upon the percentage of property owners in the area that you have a lifelong, real relationship with voice to voice. They know who you are. You're building brand. They've talked to you. They see you digitally. They feel like you're everywhere. The part of those three that most people don't want to do or are missing is the talking to them part. And it's so crucial. The voice to voice is the reason why technology will not replace real estate agents. The voice to voice and the process of the, of the transactions or the, is the reason why. Everyone has to be consulted through the market. It's changing every day. I can't even come to Dallas as, as a higher, highest producer I am in Alabama. I can't come here and, and even buy a piece of property. I would have to consult with a local agent, even me. So how do you think customers and clients and buyers and sellers, they're not even, they're not even in real estate. 
They have other lives. They need us. So, after the eight months, I make my first sale. And it was actually just my grandmother's condo. But I started selling two a month, two a month, two a month, two a month. So I started when I was 20, took me eight months, make a first sale, start selling two a month, the market explodes, I take that money, I start flipping properties, by 23 I'm a self-made millionaire. I'm on top of the world, I had Cadillacs, Hummers, houses, I actually didn't know what the heck I was doing. And eventually the whole house of cards fell. The market crashed, I lost everything, I went bankrupt, sleeping on friends' couches, went back to roofing houses, and eventually landed a job on an oil rig. But I'll tell you this right now. I'm on several podcasts every week, and the most frequent question is, what would you go back and tell your younger self? And my answer is the same every time. I literally would not tell my younger self anything, because I would not want to alter any of the lessons I learned, anything about my life that has led me to stand right here on the stage right now, I wouldn't want to alter it for a second. This is exactly where I wanted to be. And when the market crashed on me, I'll be honest with you, I was extremely happy about the situation because I was in my mid-20s. And there were, there were guys next to me that were in their 50s and 60s that were going through the exact same thing. They lost everything. They were, going, they were learning the same life lessons at 50, in their 50s and 60s. And I was in my mid-20s, and I knew this was a blessing. So I didn't know how I was going to dig out of this hole, but when I was on the oil rig, I started to become very curious, and I had all this time on my hands, because I would work on the oil rig, and then I was just there on the rig, and then I was off every other week. And I tried to dabble in real estate, but it was tough working on the rig and coming back and working night shifts and day shifts. And it was, it was a tough, tough to do. So instead, I decided I would spend my time reading. I read over 100 books over a two-year period. And that's when I realized, like, something clicked somewhere in there that what I did wrong the whole time up to that point in my career was chase deals closings, transactions. I didn't care anything about the people. I cared about them, but I was more focused. I was blinded by what was going on for them or how could I create better relationships with them by the deal and just trying to do the next deal and get the money. The market also was completely different. It was moving so fast. I mean, you could, it, everything sold in an hour. You would list it and it would sell in an hour. And so it, it was kind of actually hard to focus on the relationship when, when things are selling so quick and you're just moving so fast. But at some point I realized that was where I went wrong. And even though I lost everything because of the debt I, I acquired through trying to flip so many properties and buy so many houses and do that, I still should have been able to maintain my real estate business through the crash if I would have focused on people and that was the big lesson that I learned. So in 2008, I get laid off from the oil rig. I'd already been dabbling in real estate a little bit. I had a couple of deals in the works. And luckily enough, I closed a couple of deals. And then I was just, <laughs> I was like, thank you, Jesus. I am back. I never thought I'd sell another piece of real estate ever. There was a moment where I thought it would just never happen. So I sold a couple. That year, I did... What did I do? 80000 which was twice as much as I made on the oil rig the year before. Um, so from there, I started building my business on people, not deals. And the conversations I started having with people and the, cl the closings I was having and the conversations I was having was like magical. People were, it, it, it's really, it, it's crazy when you, when you start focusing on the people, not the deal, and you start listening to your clients and you start to really absorb their situations, and you start to become an extended part of their family and them to you, and it's a whole different ball game. It gives you such an incredible feeling, not only just as being a good person and loving people, but also your business. You feel like you have a solid business when you run your business like this. 
So it took me from 2008 to 2014 to get to 100 deals a year. That year I was the number one Remax agent in Alabama. Now think about this. I get in in 2002, I make a meal, I lose it all. I go, I work on oil rigs, roofing houses, come back in real estate, okay, learn all the lessons from that and feel like I know what I need to know. Okay, not a new agent anymore. I'm starting over, but I'm not a new agent. I have all this knowledge. I'm willing to put the work in and it still takes me six years to get to 100 deals, okay? That should tell you right there that this business just does not happen overnight. You have to focus on the actions, not the results. If you're taking the daily actions that you know are gonna get you where you wanna go tomorrow, right, don't worry about tomorrow. Let your actions speak. Let, let, the, let the results just happen. Because you don't know what the results are gonna be. You don't know what your full potential is until you've put forth the full amount of effort that you can possibly put in over time. So, I started building my business like this. I hit number one since then, since 2014. I've sold over 100 properties a year, every year since. I'm almost there this year again. And I hit number one in the state two more times, so that was three total. And this year I'm going for number four. How many of you think I'm actually gonna do it? Okay, so what I wanna do, that was crazy, three Rickies. There we go. Uh, what I wanna do is talk about my business a little bit. I just wanna share a few things about my business. Um, and I wanna talk about closing 40 million a year as a single agent every year. That's the volume I've been doing for the past three years. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Okay, well that's not working. Can y'all fix this? Efficiency and scalability. Okay, before I get into, I wanna give you five, I wanna share five things about my business. Okay, I wanna share five things about my business, but before I get into that, I wanna talk about the way that you actually can get to a level like this is by understanding that you have to work on your efficiency and scalability of your business which means you have to every day think about how can I produce more with less effort for a cheaper price? I want you guys to, to know about my four keys of success. I came up with these a couple years ago after I really thought about it, it came to me. The first thing is you have to believe. 100%, not 99.9%. .9%. 100. If you believe 99.9%, you're not gonna, it's not gonna work. You have to be fully committed, no plan B. You're gonna make this work. There's no other options. A lot of people believe, right? A lot of people believe. Very few people actually do the second part, the second key point, which is work hard. So you have to believe and then put the action behind what you're trying to do. A lot of people believe, out of that group, very few also work hard, and out of the group that believe and work hard, even fewer also, the third key point, adapt. Adapting is very interesting because this is the part a lot of people miss. They believe and they work hard and they don't know what's wrong. But they keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. They're not trying new things. They're not testing things out. They're not, they're not venturing out. They're not exploring. They're not experimenting. You have to always test things out, try new things, see what works, see what doesn't work. When you find something that works, hang on to it. Get rid of what doesn't work. Okay, let's try some more things. We find something else. Okay, now we got two things that work. Let's keep these going really strong. Try some more things, okay, found a third one, boom. And you filter through these different avenues of success, whether it be 
in real estate or life of what works and what doesn't work. And then when we start building, these are the building blocks for us to build our success on. But we gotta keep believing. We gotta keep working hard as we're adapting. But the, the one I always believed, I've always worked hard and I've always been pretty good at adapting. What I always had a problem with, and I'm still working on it, is the fourth one, and it's patience. So if you're not successful, or as successful as you want to be, I can have a five minute conversation with you and tell you which of these four things you're missing. Because it comes down to these four things. You gotta have them all to be successful. Maybe you're working hard and you're adapting well, but you don't really believe in yourself or you don't believe, you don't believe in what you're doing. Maybe you believe and work hard and, you're, and you adapt well, but you're just not patient. You just need to keep doing those things and just let it happen. That's what happened to me. In 2014, that was the year he hit 100 deals, I actually made 600,000. I wanted to make a million the next year. Really excited, put together this plan, I'm gonna do this many calls, get this many listings, talk to this many people, and boom, I'm gonna make a million dollars. January 2015 rolled around, I started my plan. January, February, March rolled around, I'm evaluating my business and I realized I'm only gonna make 600,000 again. And I became somewhat, not deeply, but somewhat depressed. Because I wasn't, I felt like something was wrong with me. What am I doing wrong? Why can't I do this? Other people are doing it, why can't I do this? And so it took a four month process for me to process this, reading, researching, actually talked to a coach, um, networked with people, tried to figure out what, what was wrong. And I thought that there was something wrong with me fundamentally, I'm doing something wrong. But what I realized was is that mentally, I was doing all the right things, I just have to let it happen and just continue to put that work in. So it took me two more years to hit the million dollars but what I realized was, and it goes back to this balance of happiness and production. There's, what I learned is that there's a gray area. There's a gray area where you can be satisfied with where you are and still extremely hungry to go to the next level. And that's where you really want to be. Because if you're just a super productive person and you always have this goal that you keep pushing out further and further every time you get closer to it, you just wanna go higher and higher and higher and you're never really happy because you're never really hitting the goal. Have the same mentality, let's, let's move our goals out, let's keep trying to go higher and higher and higher but be happy in the moment as well. And that's what I had a problem with and that's where the patience comes in. So you gotta believe, work hard, adapt and be patient. Now. I wanna share five things about my business. I do, I do business a lot differently than, than most people. I don't buy leads. I tried buying leads back in maybe 2012 or 13 or 14, whenever they first started doing it. Did it for about three months. I recently tried Facebook leads, just testing it out. I'm always testing things out. I don't have a CRM, by the way. I'm not saying I'll never not have have a CRM, I may at some point. I, I may change my mind at any moment, right? I'm always trying to figure out how I could be more efficient and do things better. But with leads, what I realized was, this is what I believe. I want you guys to think about this because I really want to help you become more efficient and scalable, okay? What I, what I, the conclusion I came up with is that these companies that are selling leads are basically selling you random people's contact information in your market. Just random people in your market. Oh no, they're motivated, they're looking, for, they're looking to buy or sell. Why do you think that? Because they were scrolling, looking at houses. Everybody looks at that, looks at houses. You may not be interested in doing anything for a year, two or three, but you're just curious what's sold in your neighborhood or what's on the market in your neighborhood. Oh, they're a motivated buyer or seller. No, they're not. But they sold, they, they sold it to you for hundreds of dollars. I think this is something that you have to think about really hard because where, where we allocate our money can be the difference in us surviving, failing, succeeding. 
why would I spend hundreds of dollars on a random person in my market's contact information when I can just get people's contact information for less than three cents? Targeted people that live in a certain neighborhood. They're the highest quality prospects anyway. They already own the property that I want to sell. Why do I want some random person's contact information. Now, the reason why you're buying leads is because you're scared to get the contact information and then just call those people. And what you're doing is you're just lying to yourself. You're saying, I'm going to spend all this money so I don't have to make this call. I'm going to wait on the lead to get to me. And when it gets to me, then what do I have to do? Call them. So what I'm saying is, is don't lie to yourself and say, okay, these buyer leads, are motiv these are motivated leads. I'm gonna pay all this money for these motivated leads. In reality, they're just random people in your market. Instead, I want you to trick yourself in, in the opposite way. I want you to get random people's contact information in your market for less than three cents and pretend like they're motivated leads. Oh, we got a question. Um, what pinpoint or narrow down who is worth calling, like the random numbers that mm -hmm. you locate? Like, right. how do you realize this is a number that I should waste my time calling uh -huh. versus? Because they own property. So just any number? Yes. Any single one? Just Anyone. Just them up and... Any, any person in your market is a lead, right? Let's move, to, let's move to the second part, best intentions. It doesn't matter to me if my prospect or someone that I'm calling wants to buy or sell property today. Okay? What I care more about is, is there anything I can do to help them? I don't, want to, I don't really care what I can't do for them or what they don't want to do. I want to know what I can do for them, okay? Nothing? Oh, cool. Is there an agent you would work with? No? Well, look, I'm sure at some point down the road you're going to do something. Would it be okay if I just stayed in touch? Cool. What's your email? Boom. Now I'm sending them a weekly email every week. Now I'm using that email to target them on social media, and now I'm building my brand with this person that I talked to, and they trusted me enough because the tone of my voice and, and my body language, even though I'm on the phone, they can hear your body language. They felt comfortable enough with me to give me their private information. Why? Because I didn't ask them if they wanted to buy or sell something. I had dinner after the VIP night with my buddy that lives in Dallas. He's not a real estate agent. And we were talking about this. And we, I, he was, I haven't talked to him in years, and he was talking about, we were talking about you know, me speaking and how I'm coaching for free and how it all works and all this stuff. And I was telling him the dynamics of the whole thing. And he said, you know what? That is interesting because there's a homeless guy right around the corner here, and he you know, I was walking past and he came up and he, and he asked me where I'm from. He didn't ask me for any money. He just asked me where I'm from. And then he said, they kind of had a little conversation. He said, oh, I'm from Alabama and stuff, Mobile. And the guy said, oh yeah, I know Mobile, the underwater tunnel and all that stuff. And they had a little conversation. The guy never asked him for a dollar. My buddy said, see you later and left. The next day, he saw the homeless guy and he gave him some money. Why? because the homeless guy didn't ask him for money like all the other homeless people. He was actually curious about my buddy, and he created kind of a little relationship with him. And my buddy knew that he needed money, he's homeless. So next time he's seen him, he's like, I like that guy, I'm gonna give him some money. So what I don't want you guys to do is sound like every other real estate agent. How he, how he didn't sound like every other homeless person begging for money, I don't need you people, you agents, acting like every other real estate agent begging for deals. I'm going, to take a, I'm going to take one question at the end of this. This is something that I realized through the crash. It's so abundant, okay? And here's the problem. 
let's say, hypothetically, there's a, there's a market that has 20,000 agents and only 5,000 transactions a year. You look at that and you think, it's not unlimited. There's no way. There's only so many trans, there's not even enough for one transaction. That's 0.25 transactions per agent on average. But I guarantee you that there's an agent out of that 20,000 that understand this, they're probably doing several hundred of those deals. Okay? What I want you to, to look at when you're looking at a market is not the opportunity of transactions. I want you to think about it in terms of the opportunity of relationships in the market. Remember market share. It's the percentage of property owners in your market that you have a relationship with. What agent has the most real relationships with property owners in the area? Okay, so when you think about it in that perspective, there's no way in the world ever in a million years that you can talk to every single person in Dallas. Never. So there's an unlimited potential of relationships for the rest of your life forever. You'll never even, you never even get to them all, okay? Transactions come from a conversation that got converted into a relationship that was then converted into the transaction. We're focusing on the transaction when this is where the magic is. It's the conversation that got converted into the relationship. And then from there, the prospect either wants to do a deal today, next month, next year, five years, 10 years, it doesn't matter. And then it goes back to, okay, how many people are we contacting per day? And out of that, how many are we connecting with? You can't do all the business ever, but you gotta think about it in the right way not transactions, it's people. Which brings me to my next key point about my business is that I learn closings happen every single day. You can go back through the worst of the markets through your MLS and recognize that there were closings that were happening every single day. So what does that tell us? It tells us we don't have to worry about the next crash if it ever happens, when it ever happens, it doesn't matter. Because closings are gonna to continue to happen every single day, okay? So, think about this, when a market transitions, this is what happens, I want you guys to really pay attention to this, this is important. When the market's going up, like it did from 2012 to 2017, 18, when the market's doing this, okay, the people that are buying and selling when the market's doing this, they, aren't, they, they put the brakes on when the market does this, which I don't know about Dallas is where my market is, and I know a lot of markets in the country, they have, it has, it's a different market over the last, say, 18 months than it was the previous five years. So when the market transitions, the clients that you have that you're working with all of a sudden put the brakes on because the market shifts, right? The prices, you know, things are staying longer on the market, inventory goes up, you know, things are changing. They're like, oh, I don't know what to do here. And it scares agents out of the business. Because your clients that you're working with right then currently, stop, they just put the brakes on. And you're like, oh no, I need money, uh, go get a job. Here's the reality of it. Here's how you transition with the market, okay? Number one, you don't freak out and you understand that closings will continue to happen every day. The people that buy when it's going like this, not the same clients that are buying when it's doing this. Two different kinds of clientele. The ones that buy when the market's going down or transitioning, they were kind of dormant as the market was going up. Okay, now they're coming out of the woodworks when the market transitions, why? Well, the buyers when the market is down, they wanna buy right now before it goes up. And sellers that sell in the crash got to sell right now. They're in trouble. So there's all this urgency in the market. Now, right now, we're not in a down market. The prices haven't plummeted, so we're not there. But what do we have to do? As the market transitions, we have listings. Well, when we get caught in the middle of a listing when the market transitioned, now we have to go back to our seller and say, hey, we got to go down on the price because the market transition, and they think, yeah, right, you're not gonna pull that one over on me, I heard that a million times. So, so you get caught with some listings of some sellers that don't wanna believe that the market has shifted, okay? And so you start freaking out, you really start freaking out because your buyers put on the brakes and, your, and your, your sellers won't reduce the price where it needs to be because the market changed all of a sudden. 
Now, what we have to do from here is, now that we know where the market is, now all we have to do is consult our sellers moving forward. We're going to get maybe half of the, our current listings to reduce the price because I need to sell, okay? But moving forward, the new listings that we get moving forward, we need to consult them on this new market, and we need to be more aggressive on our prices with them because this is why, Mr. Seller, oh, you want to price it here? Well, your neighbor is at that same price, and it's been sitting there for 200 days. Do you want to sit there for 200 days? I didn't think so. This is where we need to be. It's up to you, Mr. Seller, but this is where we need to be because the market has changed over the last six months, three months, year, 18 months, whatever it is. You see what I'm saying? So the new clients coming in are gonna get a different consultation with you moving forward. So there's gonna be a lag. Your business is gonna suffer, suffer temporarily. I don't care how great of an agent you are or how big your production is. When the market shifts, you'll have a temporary slowdown in your business. You won't be slowed down because any downtime, you should fill up making phone calls and contacting people and helping people. You should never have a moment of downtime ever. But as far as your transactions, that's gonna slow down temporarily. But then the, this is what separates the good agents and the great agents. The great agents understand this. They transition with the market. They get right back on track where they were. That's what's happened to me. My business slowed down earlier this year. Spring and summer is kind of dead. Now I'm, I'm right back to where I was or better because I understand this philosophy because I've been through it and I'm trying to tell you so that you don't have to, so you have some kind of idea. That way when it happens, you know how to handle it. Make sense? The fifth thing is personal brand. I think this is the way of the future in all sales. This is what's going to protect you from you know, something taking over industry, which will never happen. But this will separate, again, the good agents and the great agents. When people see you everywhere, they feel like they know you. This is going to help you be more efficient and scalable because when you go to listing appointments, they're already going to know who you are. They're going to feel like they know you. Now, how did I build my brand over the last 17 years when I got back in the business? 2007, right at the end, that's when I got back in real estate, I started a weekly email. I heard it over and over and over again from my prospects telling me to send them a weekly list of foreclosures. So it started out a weekly list of foreclosures because there's so many foreclosures. Well, I started sending it and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna send this to everybody. So I started sending it to everybody. Eventually in a couple years, the foreclosures went away and morphed into a market report and it's went out every single Wednesday since 2007, regardless of market conditions, hurricanes, me changing companies, vacations, doesn't matter. This is, this, is the, this is the single most important thing in my business. And, and what it does, and this is true with social media and any, any form of, of marketing that you do, this is, this is the, the reason behind it. The consistency of it and the content of it is what's going to prove to them that you are dependable, that you are hardworking that you are consistent, that you are knowledgeable, that you are professional. If you post on Instagram every day and your clients see that every day, it's a professional post, it's knowledgeable, it's good content, and it's consistent, they're gonna see you as consistent. And that's what my email did for me over the years. So I don't care what, how you market, it has to be consistent, it has to be frequent enough. A lot of people say, you know, every week is too much. No, it's not. It's, it's almost not enough. Every two weeks, they kind of start to, they, I don't know if I remember who this person is. Every month is no good at all. So I want you guys to, to really put some thought into personal branding, making videos, Facebook, Instagram, email, however you want to do it. But you have to put a plan together to build your brand of the customers that are in your market so that they know who you are forever. Real quick, my law of five. I think that we spend way too much time trying to convert every lead. And you're taking time away from other prospects that need you. Trying to convert a lead that will never convert. Okay, and you're trying to convert so hard because A, you're trying to do the deal. You're not really listening to the prospect, what they need, what they want, why they're buying, why they're selling. 
and you're just kind of, you know, trying to make it happen, but at the end of the day, you don't want to lose the deal. You're trying to convert it because you don't want to lose it either. You think if you don't convert, if you don't keep on following up and trying to get them to do something, then they're going to use another agent or something. You're going to lose deals. What I want you to do is realize a couple of things. When you lose a deal, you learn something, A, right? Everybody knows that. You're going to learn this lesson. Okay, yeah, Ricky, but it still hurts, okay? But what I really want you to understand is the future time that you get back from losing the deal, that you don't have to spend on that deal anymore moving forward. When you understand this concept and you lose a deal, you're like, okay, great, I have more time that I can go get five more deals. I want, next time you lose a deal, I want, I want you to give yourself five minutes to think about what happened, why it happened, what you learned from it, and sulk about it on your phone, five minutes on the clock. After the five minutes, completely forget about that deal and go get five more deals with the time you just got back. This is a way you can take losing deals and multiply your business. Where most people take that future time and just sulk about it, talk about it. I, I can always tell a, a non-productive agent because they're always talking about the deal that got away. I have 100 signed copies of my book. I'll be signing them, giving them, what, giving them out. I only have 100. I don't know if there's 100 people here or not. Um, okay, let me ask you this. Would you rather a coach who doesn't sell or never sold or someone who is in the market right now selling 100 properties a year? Zero to diamond.com, completely free. Online course. Um, we do live training, there's a 90 day action plan, and I have achievement levels. Once you pass the 90 days, you get a call with me and you go to gym, put you in a separate Facebook group. Trying to get as many diamonds made as possible. If you email me, ricky at zero to diamond.com, I'll send you my 2020 marketing plan. I answer every single DM on Instagram, every day. YouTube. Okay, I wanna take one question. I'll let them pick who it's gonna be. Looks like there's two questions, I'll take two. Hey, Ricky, would you share your business plan with us or at least give us a snapshot of what that looks like? Say again? Your business plan, would you share that with us? Yeah, yeah, just email me, ricky at zero to diamond .com. You'll you, get it Is it a to great breakdown of how to do 100 million? Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, or zero to diamond .com. There's a full online course. I share everything about my business. Perfect. DM me on Instagram and ask me any questions. I, I do all this for nothing. Thank you. Actually, he had the question. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. So what I heard from you is that your business is really all about relationships, right? Right. My question is, how do you do 100 deals and maintain sanity and maintain relationships? Mm. Well, um, it's because I've been doing it so long, right? I have such a, such a huge business. I have so many past clients and referrals. Um, I, think, I think something that's really cool, I've said this before, but... You guys should build your business and go so hard to build your business and make so many calls that your prospects start cold calling you. And when I get something under contract, I don't worry about it anymore. See, you're taking, something, taking a pending deal and letting it drive you crazy. Whereas I take a pending deal and I forget about it. I'll check on, I'll look, I'll look at it on a list of the 20 pending deals that I have and I'll say, that one's good, that one's good, I need to call them, that one's good, I don't need to do anything there, okay, I need to call that title company. I'll make those three calls in 15 minutes and I'm done with all my pending deals for the day. I now have seven hours and 45 minutes to try to find more business and help more people. See what I'm saying? Maintain those relationships and do all the things that I do. So the weekly email is something that I create every week. It's original content. And, and that does the heavy lifting for me to, to continue to build that bond. So I built something that's efficient and scalable. One more, one more up front. Got a microphone. 
you talked a lot about short tail and long tail or, or what's in front of you is very clear. We all know what we want to do, what accomplish, want to accomplish in the next year. But we're not as clear or not as focused on the long tail, uh-huh. the relationships. Yeah. Right? So what are you doing or could you share with us, if you may, or yeah. if you can, what you want to do in the next five years? Where, where do you see yourself? What are my goals in the next five years? Yeah, goals, they don't have to be real estate related, uh-huh. but just holistically relationship wise. Yeah. Where do you see yourself in five years? Dude, like on Mars somewhere. I don't really don't know, man. I, like I didn't think I would be right here five years ago. Or I guess, I guess to better phrase a question for more actual items we could take, what right. would you recommend us do to create more clarity for the next five years? I think that, that the, what I really believe is that, you know, when you think about long tail, short tail, I think that the problem is you're separating the two. And I think the real answer is, is that the way that I've built my business, I built it long term and short term at the same time. Like, like everything you do should have dual purpose. You should have more than one reason for why you're doing each, each action. Every, everything that you do should have more than one reason. Please don't be laser focused on, I'm calling this subdivision about this listing I just got to try to sell the listing, but you're being closed minded to the fact that you could create more relationships of people that might want to buy stuff or sell things. See what I'm saying? And so, you know, if you have a buyer that wants to buy in a subdivision, you can't find anything in that subdivision and you tell that buyer, oh, I'm going to call the subdivision. And the buyer's like, oh, don't do that. Don't do that just for us. We're not that serious. We may or may not buy. We don't know. Like, okay, cool. That's fine if you don't want to. I'm going to do it anyway in case you do. But if you don't, that's fine. I may get listings. I'll get new clients. I'll get new buyers. And so when you're talking to prospects, what you have to understand is closings happen every day. And that that process, people that you run into, some of them are going to be ready to do stuff now. Some are going to be ready to do stuff in a month, two years, five years, Right? And so what, what, you, what you're doing is, is you're building your business for now because you're finding people that want to do deals now, but you're also finding people that want to do deals with you later at the same time. Most agents, I'll leave you with a couple of things. Most agents live off the less than 1% of people, of prospects who want to do a deal right now. They only, only talk to people if they're motivated right now. Less than 1%. And what's more interesting to me, what I want you to build your business on, is not, I want, you to, I want you to make money off the 1%, but then I also want you to capture the 20 to 30% of people who love you enough to do a deal, they're just not ready yet. See what I'm saying? And so now you got it all. You got it short term and long term. The reason why I win in real estate is because no one loves my clients more than me. And the reason why I'm going to continue to win in coaching is because nobody loves you guys more than me. Thank you guys for listening.